I shook my head slowly. <clears throat> he laughed and nodded, half dropped, half threw the torch into the cellar and ran at me. I almost released the steely as I saw him come at me through the catapult. But I just in the last second before my fingers opened, I saw he had dropped the axe. It clattered off the steps to the cellar as Eric dodged past me. I dropped the du dropped and ducked to one side. I rolled. I saw Eric herring away over herring away over the garden, heading south down the island. I dropped the catapult, ran down the steps, and picked up picked the torch up. It was a meter into the cellar, nowhere near the bales. I threw it outside quickly as the bombs in the blazing shed started to go off. The noise was deafening. Shrapnel whizzed over my head. Windows in the house blew and the shed was totally demolished. A couple of bombs were blown out of the shed and exploded in other parts of the garden. But luckily none came near me. By the time I was, it was safe for me to raise my head, the shed no longer existed. All the sheep were dead or gone, and Eric had vanished. My father was in the kitchen holding a pail of water and, and a carving knife. I came in, and he had put the knife down on the table. He looked about a hundred years old. On the table was a specimen jar. I sat down at the head of the table, co collapsing into the chair. I looked at him. That was Eric at the door, Dad, I said, and laughed. My ears were still ringing from the explosions in the shed. My father stood looking old and stupid, and his eyes were bleary and wet, and his hands shook. I felt myself calm down gradually. W he began, then cleared his throat. What, what happened? He sounded almost sober. He tried to get into the cellar. I think he was going to blow us all up. He's run off now. I've put the door back up as best I can. Most of the fires are out. You won't need that, I nodded at the pail of water he held. Instead, I'd like you to sit down and tell me one or two things I'd like to know. I sat back in my chair. He looked at me for a second, then picked up the specimen jar but it slipped from his fingers, fell to the floor, and smashed. He gave a nervous laugh, bent and, stood, bent and stood back up holding what had been inside the jar. He held it out for me to see, but I was looking into his face. He closed his hand, then opened it again like a magician. He was holding a pink ball, not a testicle, a pink ball, like a lump of plasticine or wax. I stared back into his eyes. Tell me, I said, so he told me.